Hello everyone, David here. If you've watched my channel before, you'll know I've made quite a lot of videos about the 96HX Stomp. I think it's a great bit of kit, really good value for money, and it's kind of revolutionized my gigging life because I don't take a big heavy amp to gigs anymore. I just take a pedal board and I use the amp simulators that are built into the Stomp. But I've got a gig coming up where I play acoustic guitar and it got me wondering, is there any point taking my pedal board along to a gig where I play acoustic? Because I'm not gonna be that reliant on effects um, and distortion. Um, but the short answer is yes, there is a point in taking the HX Stomp along um, and I'm going to show you why. So first of all, if you do take an acoustic and plug it directly into a PA and whoever's running the PA doesn't have any nice effects like reverb, you get a very dry signal, something that sounds like this. But if you are to use the HX Stomp and use it on its most basic acoustic sound, which is called Studio, you get a sound like this. So as you can see, it's kind of the reverb makes the biggest amount of difference and it just makes it a much smoother kind of sound. Um, but there's also some other effects in there like a compressor, which can reduce the impact of the loud noises you make. So let's have a little dive into this patch and see what makes it interesting at all. So yeah, this is a 32A acoustic studio. And um, the first node is just the input volume pedal, which you can use if you plug in uh, an optional expression rocker. So that could be useful live as well. Then into a studio tube preamp, parametric EQ, which doesn't seem to be doing an awful lot. So yeah, then into a compressor, which as I said, can just help take the edge off some of the really loud volumes when you're thrashing away or, or chugging away on one of the low strings. Uh, then into a delay, which is currently disabled, and into reverb, which is enabled. And then your stomp options are, um, you can turn that delay on and off with the middle pedal and you can turn the reverb off and back on <laughs> with the first um, stomp switch if you want. So yeah, that's the Acoustic Studio. There's also another patch called Songwriter, which has got a few interesting effects on it. So also volume pedal, preamp, compressor, optional delay, plate reverb, and a one switch looper. So we'll come back to the looper. And then this is a very weird acoustic patch called Out There. This has got volume pedal, compressor, studio tube preamp, and then it splits the signal into an echo and a multi-pass block. Multi-passing into the echo again to produce some interesting effects. Mixing them back together, and then some cave reverb on at the end. Let's just have a little noodle around with this one, see what it sounds like. Very nice bags and bags of echo and reverb. So yeah, if you're playing solo and you really want to fill out the sound, that patch is kind of useful for you. I've made my own acoustic patch. I want to take you through that. It's based on the sort of basic line six one, but I've added a couple of things to it. Let's have a look. So of course it's called a dad acoustic. So I've kept most of it as it was. The only thing I've added is this gain block at the end and it's turned off by default and then assigned to the first foot switch. So my idea is that um, because I will be playing with the band, um, I want to have a kind of moderate volume most of the time. And then when I want to play a solo, yeah, on acoustic guitar, I hit that and I just get a, a gain of four decibels. I'll just give you a little example of um, kind of the gain in work.
Okay, so that's why the gain is useful. It just gives me that little edge when I want to play single notes that don't have as much oomph. The other thing I've added to this patch is a one switch looper, and this is super useful if you're ever gonna be playing gigs on your own. The short version is you hit it once to start recording, and then hit it again to play back what you've just recorded. And then you can hit it again to overdub on top of that loop still, and again to go back to playing it. And then when you want to stop it, you double tap. But as you can see, it's quite difficult to double tap fast enough. There you go. And if you want to clear the loop, you double tap and hold. What I found though is that it's quite difficult to get those double taps with my foot. Um, I wish there was a way to control the tap, double tap speed. Let me know if there is a hidden way in the global settings somewhere. Um, so if you use it in one switch looper mode, it's quite difficult. Um, you can set it up as a three switch looper. So I'll link a video up here, which actually gives a really good explanation of um, how to set it up in one switch looper and three switch looper mode. It's not my video, but the guy does such a good job. I, I want you to go and watch his instead. Um, but I'll give you a little demonstration of how the looper sounds once you get it set up. So that's cool, and um, if you want to set it up in three switch looper mode, you can assign one foot switch to record and overdub, and then the next one to stop and play. And it just gives you a bit more control then, um, and you don't have to rely on having to double tap, uh, which can be very difficult in the heat of the moment. So that's my acoustic setup with the HX Stomp. I'm quite excited to try it out live and on the road. Um, so let's zoom forward ahead in time uh, to the gig in about one week, um, and I'll show you some footage from the gig and also a bit of the setup and stuff. Okay, let's go. So I'm about to head off on my acoustic gig. Um, if you're interested in what I'm taking with me, as you may know, I like to travel as light as possible. I'm in the car today, so it doesn't matter as much, but it's still nice to have fewer bags. Um, I'm just taking my acoustic guitar in its case and a couple of jack cables, uh, and then one bag, which has got my pedal board and all of the other things in it. Let me show you exactly what's inside here as well. So in the top layer, Lots more cables. Um, you definitely want at least a couple of spare jack cables um, whenever you go gigging, because even if you only break one and need a spare, someone else might need a spare as well. In the middle layer, we've got the pedal board itself, and then stuff for um, monitoring the signal. So this is like a tiny mixer with headphones, power cables, guitar stand, stand for my camera, and then an extra foot switch for the stomp, and then XLR and jack cables, like little patch ones. Today, I've got a bit of a drive ahead of me, so I'm gonna head off the two hours to Cambridge now. Let's go. I don't know if it's a particularly British thing to do or not, but it's kind of a tradition to stop at a motorway service station on the way to your destination, uh, where you can buy many overpriced but delicious treats, um, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. So we have arrived. Hello. 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 Hi. Michael, what have you got over there? Did we bring the big mixer last time? Uh, we had a, a smaller mixer than this, but pretty much the same kind of thing. Okay. Uh, but that broke, so I've got a new oh. one for okay. this time. One power cube. I'm going to be playing the, uh, the, the famous upright. This, right. This is going to be lovely. So yeah, this is it's all kinds of fun. So yeah, it's 
what cool. that does. Are you looking forward to playing a real piano? I am very much looking forward to playing this. I'm playing with the pedal on. Ooh. Pedal on the, the pedal for not disturbing the next door neighbour. <laughs> That's very considerate. Drum reveal. Here so, we are. We now have the complete setup, including comps. Bongos are still here. We've now got Crash and Splash as well. And then we've got, as well as the cowbell down there, we've got the cowbell if I want to hit it with some sticks. We've got some one shot shakers, which only work one way. So if you do it this way, things don't work. But it does mean you can do funky things like like that. Wah shaker. Uh, wah heavy shaker. shaker. Yeah, it makes different wah sounds. So. Whoa. That's quite fun. I had no idea that existed. <coughs> did I give you that then? You did. Because I have three of those on. Yeah. Then you got these. Those are quite fun. And then we got some more wood blocks. We've got two tambourines. One to shake, one to hit. And then wind chimes and triangle. Wow, there we go. That Very nice. That the setup. This evening, Okay, so gig completed, and uh, I'm very happy that I had the HX Stomp along with me today. We did a very similar gig to this about four years ago, and uh, I didn't have a pedal board or anything really, just a, a volume pedal that was quite hard to use. And so I couldn't give myself that instant little volume boost for when I played a solo, and I felt like a lot of them kind of got lost in the mix um, with the rest of the band. And today I had that, and of course I had all of the other nice effects, like a bit of compression and reverb. So yeah, definitely going to use this setup again uh, for future acoustic gigs, which might be the minority, but you know, it's nice to have that set up kind of defined for myself in the future. Okay, right, time to head back to London uh, and I'll head back to David in the studio as well. So there you go. If you've been wondering about this combination of equipment, I hope I've answered some questions for you today. Um, I'm quite looking forward to the next acoustic gig where I get to play with this stuff and, you know, use my looper pedal again. Um, if you've got any tips and tricks to share with a setup or you have a really good patch for acoustic guitar, um, I'd love to know about it. So please leave me a message in the comments section below. Okay, that's it. Leave me a like um, if this was a good video and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.